Hey, this is Mike. I'm Ricky. And you are here with King of Worms. What drives us musically as a group is uh, we like to we look forward to hearing the outcome of all of our hard work behind the scenes, um, especially when our music gets out and we get to see all the people react to everything that we've put our time towards over the last probably like two years we've been working on this album. Definitely. Uh, yeah, good or bad, it's all... It's all good for me because some of y'all are hilarious with your hatred. Let's be honest. <laughs> the band's name comes from the early days of when we were trying to form this group. Uh, I used to run this band with the previous bass player from the band Pain Patterns. And uh, we were torn between two names. There was the Lord of Thorns and there was King of Worms. Both were supposed to be more of a aggressive take on a reference towards Jesus Christ, Lord of Thorns being the halo of thorns that he wore, the crown of thorns, and then King of Worms was a term used in a slanderous way towards Jesus Christ, being a king of worms, a king of nothing. We ended up ultimately deciding on that band name and changing the phrasing a little bit once I brought the project back as a solo effort in 2020. Our next album, The Womb of Borealis, it's almost like a reimagining of the band. Our first album, The Lord of Thorns, was more or less a tribute homage album to the late 80s, early 90s death metal acts. Um, the biggest takeaway we got from that was people wanted to hear a more unique, creative approach, um, something more different than what we did on that one. Although the intent was to make an homage album um i wanted to give a new insight to a reimagining of king of worms for this one so we tried to exclude ourselves from using any inspiration if you will from previous bands or other artworks we tried to mainly work within ourselves creatively to produce what's going to be on the womb of borealis the lyrical content on this album um features several different types of inspiration um most of it of course is very literature inspired as my big fan of reading and religious texts fantasy horror lovecraftian themes etc um a lot of the lyrical content focuses on cosmic mysticism and horror along with some more satanic left-hand path influenced lyrics and multiple types of horror influenced themes such as you'd find in songs like grave of birth the story behind the album cover was more or less a toss-up of ideas between myself and our artist Kristen georgia who goes under the alias of authera art um, originally we wanted to make a concept of a monolith in a more spatial structure with a amalgamation of flesh and torsos kind of growing over itself trying to reach its way to this monolith at first i had a couple like rough loose sketch ideas but as soon as i tossed it to Kristen, she more or less took it upon herself and made a lot of creative decisions that truly made the artwork synonymous to our music for what's going to be on the next album the womb of borealis the new goat whore, Angels Hung from Archways of Heaven, is very good. And also the latest Storm Ruler album is quite good. I have that on vinyl. It sounds amazing. Yeah, same for myself. I'd have to say new goat whore and Storm Ruler. Um, the new Dark Funeral album is definitely going to be a classic for me as well. Uh, the local music scene here is... Uh, it's, it's okay. Um... In the past, it's been definitely a little more cutthroat and whatnot, but these days it seems to be a little more welcoming. Um, there has been quite a decline in like venues to play here, so um, you know shows are kind of a little few and far between than they used to be. But uh, for the most part, it's uh, it's a pretty good scene, and um, there's a lot of support around for bands. So, as far as future plans for the band, I wouldn't really say we have anything too written in stone yet too concrete we're kind of just trying to finish off this run for the womb of borealis since we've been working on it for more or less 
almost two years now. Um, we've already started dipping into creating new material. Now that we have our workflow settled out, we know how our lineup is going to maintain itself. So we're probably just going to look directly into making album number three after this one has run its course with a possibility of maybe getting together a live lineup maybe in the near future. That's right. Metal rules. Uh, it doesn't. It's too fast. It's too abrasive. Uh, it's very violent and uh, offensive. And the only reason I'm in a metal band is because all the hip-hop bands are taken. So that's why I play metal. 